Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Krishan, and I would like to invite you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. In this conversation, we'll be talking about the Kundalini Syndrome. Uh, but first, I would like to thank uh, Suntara and the O'Connor family of uh, the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland. Uh, they have so graciously given uh, given us the ability to have this show and set it up and did the whole thing. And so I'm very, very grateful uh, to the O'Connor family and Centaur in particular. Uh, for those of you who do not already know, I would like to give you some of the other uh, venues uh, where you can get information about your Kundalini Awakening experience outside of Blog Talk Radio, and uh, that would be Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. That's a website. Uh, it's Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. And also you can go to uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, again, the number one, at yahoogroups.com. And you can go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Facebook. We have a group there. We also have a Kundalini Awakening uh, apostrophe, and that's also on Facebook. And we have a new one on Google Plus called Kundalini Awakening with an apostrophe after that. Uh, you may also go, if you wish, to YouTube, and the channel there would be Chrism and then the number zero, Kundalini, and that has about 224 videos, uh, short videos, about uh, your Kundalini awakening experience, so many of the things that can happen. And, and uh, we cover uh, a lot of the of the topics that we are covering here on uh, Blog Talk Radio. Uh, I would like to thank in advance, I'd like to thank of course, Amelia Centara, Eileen Loro, and the many people who support and help uh, myself and the, and the Kundalini Awakening Systems Program to exist and to to have these opportunities to for, you know, for outreach into the populations uh, because many people are having this and yet they don't know what's going on. And that kind of ties in with the uh, conversation for today. Uh, before I start, I would like to give you the, the call-in number, if there's anybody who would like to call in. And that number is uh, 347. And you may have to put a 1 in front of that if you're calling internationally. 1 in the, in the country code, uh, um, I believe that would be the United States country code, which I think is zero one. Anyway, so it's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Once again, that is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Uh, also, there is a a a gathering. Uh, that is uh, being organized, and it is in it is on April nineteenth. It is in Santa Rosa, California. Uh, this this looks to be a very 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 uh, interesting gathering. A very very uh, I mean a gathering that is that I feel is going to be very very successful for a lot of different people. And uh, I encourage any and all who uh, who can make it to come to this ga this gathering to to participate in it. Uh, you can get more information uh, on the Kundalini retreat in Santa Rosa, California. Uh, it's uh, Friday, April nineteenth, and it's a two day retreat. Uh, it's a it's a two day Kundalini Retreat, and it's an opportunity for meditation and exercise and education about the awakened Kundalini and 
an invitation into the wake the awakening of your own spiritual evolution. Uh, so give it a you know consider this. This is not a common thing that is offered really on the web by anybody that that you know is not charging you a hundred million dollars to do it. So consider that. And uh, let's get into our conversation. Often, when Kundalini, when when, when people have a, a Kundalini uh, experience, uh, often they they won't understand what's happening. They'll have no idea really what's happening at all. And the very first thing that will happen within that context is the person will go into fear. The person will go into fear, and inside of that fear, uh, they will start to make decisions that, you know, can negatively affect, can negatively affect how a person responds to the kundalini. And, you know, one of the first things that a person can feel is, is, is that they feel like they're possessed. They feel like there's something else inside them that isn't them. Therefore, i.e., it's not making, it's not the, the, the typical choice matrix that the person is used to feeling. And so, you know, with with, with that in mind, it it's uh, challenging to say the least challenging to say the least um, you know within the same context um, we are so used to to uh, making all the choices and all the decisions about what we do and how we do what we do and Kundalini won't necessarily allow that to occur. Uh, it it has its own agenda with you. It has its own agenda, and it its agenda will take over control. Its agenda will take over control uh, of the person's choices and the uh, you know the individual understandings uh, that the person will receive inside of the uh, of the experience. Now, it looks like I have a caller here. Go ahead and... Uh... Hello. Uh, thank you for calling in. Who am Hi, I speaking I just want, with? I just want to listen. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Go right ahead. I have ahead. a question, I'll raise... I'll push sure. one. Okay, very good, very good. Thank you. So, so yeah, the first thing that a person will often feel is that, you know, they have this level of possession occurring because they're not in control, at least to the degree that they have been in the past, of of their their life experience. This, you know, it's easy to say. It, it, it's much harder to experience. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, for however many years you've been alive, all of a sudden you have no control over certain aspects of your life that, uh, you know, till that moment you've had total control over. That that can really upset a person. That can really really rock a person's reality and 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 cause a person to question their sanity cause a person to uh really go into deep states of fear this is what happens this is the seed beginning of a kundalini syndrome experience unfortunately in our society there isn't a lot of information about people going into the kundalini awakening experience uh what what typically happens is is uh, they'll go to an MD or they'll go to a psychologist or psychiatrist or a counselor or 
you know, an employer or, or somebody that they trust that that they feel is in a position of uh, of uh, you know helping them out with this type of a of a issue. And in our society, there really is very, very, very few people who have any idea of what is occurring uh, inside of this type of, of an experience. And so, you know, if, if they go to an MD or a psychiatrist, psychologist, counselor, uh, one of the first things that's going to be diagnosed for them is that you know they're, you know, they're having. Uh, schizophrenic tendencies or bipolar tendencies and, you know, a, a drug or a chemical regimen is prescribed to them. And and from there, it, it, can, it can really, it can be difficult. Kundalini doesn't really um, respond well to chemical incursions. I'm sure that there are some chemicals out there that that can really, really, you know, have an effect on the on the phenomena, but it doesn't it doesn't put the kundalini away. It doesn't, you know, it, the, the kundalini once it's awake, it's awake. It stays awake. It's a natural evolution of our of our humanity, and so of course, uh, evolution will have its way. Spiritual evolution will have its way. And so, as a person. Uh, begins to experience this this feeling of being possessed and um, losing control of their life, and they initiate fear into the process. Uh, fear opens up other avenues of fear. You know, so in a way, fear begets fear. And this fear can cause pain. This fear can cause pain in a person, and... Blockages can occur, and as these blockages occur, uh, more pain can be experienced, and it becomes a self-replicating situation, and and uh, a spiral into into extreme extreme states of difficulty. Uh, as this spiral continues, and the pain continues because the energies aren't being allowed to flow, it will affect the mental state. And your mental decision making capabilities are, will be will be affected. And paranoia can set in. And as the paranoia uh, sets in, the world, or the reality of a person can begin to shrink and begin to, to close off uh, I've had uh, experiences with people who their their paranoia becomes so intense that they they retreat into say you know into a room in the house and they'll block off all the windows and uh, you know they'll begin to to hear voices uh, you know entities will begin because. You know, many entities are out there that enjoy the uh, the process of fear. You know, it's something that they can feed upon. And, and so those entities will come in, and they're typically of a not the nicest quality of entity. And, uh, you know, they'll start telling the person to kill themselves or to hurt themselves in some way or to hurt other people. And... and because the person's reality matrix has been so uh, altered by their fear and the amplification of the fear uh, within the kundalini, uh, they begin to pay attention to these things in many cases. And and I've run into people, <coughs> excuse me, who who retreat not only uh, into the one room in the house, but they retreat into the closet of that one room, and they won't come out. They'll take their food in there. Uh, they'll do their, you know, their excretions in there. I've even uh, known of people to to uh, cook their food inside the closet because they don't want to have anything to do with the outside world. They don't want to have anything, any kind of a light source coming in. Uh, they, you know, they're basically becoming consumed by uh, a very, very uh, difficult and hurtful 
experience uh, brought about by the Kundalini, not so much though brought about by the Kundalini, just brought about by a lack of information about the Kundalini. And the Kundalini itself does not have this agenda with you. The Kundalini itself has a, a very positive and, and beautiful evolutionary agenda with a person. But within our technological society and our, uh, you know, our society in the West, which is typically, and, and I, I do say typically because not everybody, I'm not speaking in absolutist terms, but typically the uh, organizations that, that have power in our society, like science or finances or governmental or educational uh, health care sources, do not recognize the kundalini. So they don't really have anything to say. They recognize some of the symptoms, you know, so they'll call it bipolarism or they'll call it schizophrenia or they'll call it, uh, you know, spiritual emergency. Uh, but they won't attribute it to any kind of a of a uh, of a level of importance or a degree of importance that allows it to be studied and and uh, validated as an actual uh, event within a human uh, uh, experience. It, it becomes more of a of a psychological issue or a, you know a psychiatric disorder. And as you know, as they uh, as they pursue that type of an attitude, that prohibits any kind of <clears throat> rational, um, experiential based, uh, uh, you know, inquiry, scientific or otherwise, uh, that allows it to be to be understood in a, in a better way. And so, a person can 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 go extremely. Uh, into an extremely dark and painful place with the kundalini when the kundalini syndrome is allowed to occur. Now, there is also levels of karma that will help a person go into a kundalini syndrome um, position. And and you might think, wow, gosh, that, what a terrible karma. And, and, and in some cases, yes, it, it very much is. <laughs> Excuse me. And so that person will be allowed to have a, a dark, hurtful uh, kundalini experience for a certain amount of time. And uh, their reality will be controlled to the degree that a, a another person or information uh, will only be given to them in specific ways. You know, a person passing them on the street might say a certain word and that might trigger a certain level of information that comes into them or a sight, you know, a, you know, seeing a certain uh, episode played out in their daily life uh, will trigger uh, a certain level of information to be given. And so they slowly begin to pull themselves out of, of this, this situation. In many ways, with the Kundalini, because it knows our society, it knows the the level of, of of technology addiction we have, and it knows the individual person's level of intuitive understanding uh, about what is occurring to them. It knows this, and so it begins to initiate a a a, a program of information but also a program of enforced acceptance to what is occurring. And depending on the person's level of resistance to this enforced acceptance to the kundalini will determine how bad uh, and how long the symptoms will last. The longer the person resists, the longer the, the, uh, this, this particular education is going to last, and so I will encourage uh, those out there who who are uh, experiencing this right now. Stop resisting. Uh, also, stop listening to the entities. <clears throat> That's another big deal, right there. Is as I mentioned in another uh, conversation. 
the entities really should not be communicated with, no matter what they say to you, no matter what you see them do or, or whatever interaction with them you have. Discarnate entities or entities that don't have a body uh, don't have any business directing or controlling a person who has a body, and it's certainly not a body that's having kundalini. So I'll just kind of leave that as it is, and if, if you're interested in more of that information, please go to the uh, to the other conversation about uh, discarnate entities. So as the person resists the kundalini, the kundalini persists and, and continues to give the individual uh, the level of experience that is required for their karma to be balanced, but also for their education to be increased. And so once again, don't resist the Kundalini and do not, do not go into fear over this. This is not to be afraid of. This is not something that that needs to cause you a lot of fear. I've had this for over 23 years. And and, uh, when I started out with my experience, you know, I didn't know what it was certainly had no idea about what the source of my symptoms were, all kundalini symptoms, right? And so, yeah, the first thing I went into was fear. I went into fear. But I'd had kind of an interesting childhood up to that point anyway, where I was, as a child, I was living the effects of a previous kundalini awakening. And so, you know, I, as a child, I had the visions and I had the the special skills, but it, it, it between uh, my childhood and and what I'll call the uh, the second awakening in this in this lifetime in this in this physical body, um, there was a, a hiatus. Uh, so there was a a period of about ten years where I didn't have any of these things. And so I was able to live a somewhat normal life and become, you know quite uh, enamored with living a life of, of the five senses and whatnot. And so when the Kundalini uh, began to change this body when I was 30, um, it was it, it was a fearful it was a fearful event for me. Uh, and I I did a lot of the, of the things that I'm describing to you. I went into fear. I started hearing, you know, the entities, and I could actually see them, and uh, didn't know what to do. You know, I, you start hitting the books at Barnes and Noble and the other bookstores, and you start doing your research, and you know, nobody really knows anything about what is occurring. Even, even these days, you know, you have you have some people that that you know claim to have had Kundalini, and they make these absolute statements about. What you not, what you must do, what you must not do, and and uh, you know if it doesn't fit your situation, uh, and then it you know of course it won't work, then it doesn't really help you. And so I I set out on a on a journey of information and resistance. <laughs> I, I I can I can honestly say that I made every mistake that I am telling you and suggesting to you not to make. Okay. Uh, my education was given uh, on, a, on an experiential level. I didn't. There weren't any books to read about this. The only book, actually, and I and I got this like after a decade into the uh, into the experience. I uh, you know I read Gopi Krishna's book. He hadn't written it when I when I first had my Kundalini my initial experience, and uh, you know when I read his book, wow, that was a shocker. And his book, his the author's name is Gopi Krishna, and the book is uh, Kundalini, the Evolutionary Energy in Man. And it's basically a, a, a biography of his experience with Kundalini, which is a terrible, terrible experience. Once again, you know, he had Kundalini Syndrome as well, and it almost killed him. And, and you know, I'm reading that, and I'm going, wow, that's what I've got? Oh, jeez. You know, how horrible is that? Uh, so it took me a long, long, long time, and it took me a lot of trial and error and and, uh, and many different uh, experiences that you know, I can't go into in this short uh, time that I have here. But 
I survived. The unfortunate uh, outcome for many people that have Kundalini syndrome is they'll commit suicide. Uh, and the entities will encourage them to commit suicide, and so it seems like the thing to do. Uh, and I will say, no, 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 you do not need to commit suicide. You don't need to hurt yourself in any way. You don't need to hurt anybody else in any way. If you look at some of these uh, gun uh, uh, incidences that have been happening uh, in 2012 and, and, and in the United States and other, you know, other areas of, of Europe and the world, you'll see a lot of people, you know, being killed by by young, young, typically young men, uh, who, if you look at them, they you, you, you know, it's fairly clear that they're being possessed by entities. Not necessarily within a kundalini context, though. Uh, they're being they're being possessed by entities by virtue of pharmaceutical uh, uh, SSRI type of uh, uh, ramifications. But these 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 medicines allow the entities to come, and the person will hear voices, and so on and so forth. And you can see, you know, some very very disastrous results. Uh, uh, from this. This this is similar to what the Kundalini syndrome will bring about. I mean, as we begin to open spiritually uh the some of the harsher, more violent aspects of the spiritual uh universe will begin to to be accessed and, and in that access uh certain malevolent uh qualities can be allowed to come through and the kundalini will allow this as a way of of helping a person come into ethical uh, expression uh, and balance within the society that they're in and these ethics uh, some of the cross-cultural ethics are to do your best not to hurt other people uh, do your best uh, not to kill not to harm not to be dishonest, uh, i.e., don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, that type of thing. And these high ethical standards are, are you know, one of the, the great basic teachings of the Kundalini. And if you don't come into Kundalini at a level of of, uh, of fear, and then if you don't, you know, begin to spiral into that, the Kundalini syndrome, these, these ethical... Um, Standards of conduct are very, very clear for the person, and and these ethics will actually uh, serve as a prophylactic against Kundalini syndrome. Because if if you extrapolate on, on some of the just some of the ones that I just mentioned, you'll, you you begin to see that well, if, if you if you do no harm, well, that includes harming yourself as well. And so if you do not harm others, you do not harm yourself, and and all of a sudden you you become an expression of grace upon this world. And this is what Kundalini really is. It is an evolutionary uh, education and transformation into a body, a physical body of grace. A, uh, some of the ancients would call it... Sorry, I dropped the phone here. Some of the ancients would call it the divine flesh or the flesh made divine. Um, and this is this is uh, one of the primary goals of the Kundalini, uh, as it is you know you know opening within a body in a person. So some of the other things that can occur with the Kundalini syndrome is as as your mental mind and your and your and your physical body becomes taken out of out of your normal uh comfort zone uh it 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 can affect your job situation which is what happened for me you know i lost my job and uh lots of people will lose their job i mean think about it if you if you're camping out in your closet you're not exactly getting ready to go to work uh, so the job situation goes away, which means the money situation goes away. 
which can which have a negative effect on your on your social relationships, your love life. Uh, it'll have a very deleterious effect on your love life, and and uh, so your entire reality begins to crumble, and a person winds up homeless on the street, which is what happened to me. And you know, as this occurs, many many different things are happening that are of a positive nature. The Kundalini will constantly strive to to give you advice and experiences that are positive too. But if your fear is so strong, uh, you're just going to have to go through that level of fear for a while. Uh, you know, this can last years. and and But it doesn't have to. If you know not to resist, if you know that this is a positive, natural, evolutionary function of a human body, then you realize that this, okay, my body's wired to have this. My body is wired to have kundalini. Therefore, I do not have to be negatively uh, affected by this experience. As a matter of fact, this experience in many ways is so, so very beautiful and, and so loving and so comforting and so different than what I would have ever expected my life to be. You know, and if you just, you just look at some of the uh, phenomena associated with it, uh, you know, having experience of, uh, of being in two places at the same time or having a broad or a narrow band telepathic experience, uh, seeing waking visions, um, having animals land on you or come up to you, wild animals that are out you know, have no fear of you all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Having amazing dream visions where you're giving, you're given very, very specific teachings about ethics and about how you handle certain situations in your life. Um, this happens every day. You know, this this will happen 24-7. For a person uh, who is on the street inside of a Kundalini, uh, uh, you know, awakening, uh, that's 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 you know been allowed to go into a syndrome. Sometimes we need to have that breakdown in our reality in order to remove some of the expectations that we have in our reality. Expectations. Uh, so, for instance, uh, you expect to be in total control over everything that you do and think and see and feel and experience on a physical level. Well, that's just not the way it is. Sometimes surprises occur. And Kundalini is one of those surprises. But until you can get that ideology out of your system, you won't be able to, to ex you know, accept what the kundalini has to bring because you're not in control with kundalini it is in control and you know it is this unknown unseen force and so once again you know in our our primal fear you know can come up and unless it's assuaged in some way you know it 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 it, it can serve to 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 have that, you know, a, a hard effect on your on your reality matrix. So, you know what some of these issues are. You know what they are. You know that you can have paranoia. You don't know what to eat, what not to eat. Although the Kundalini will guide you, but you're so used to eating and, and drinking whatever it is you want that uh, you'll just resist the Kundalini guidance and you'll go ahead and eat all these things and. And, and put into your body all these things that are absolutely horrible for your body and and for the, the kundalini going through you. And so you suffer, and you suffer, and you suffer, and you suffer. And pretty soon you may get the indication that, oh, maybe I shouldn't drink all this alcohol. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be smoking all of these cigarettes or uh, whatever recreational drug the person might uh, be, be smoking Oh, maybe I shouldn't be engaging in in uh, you know these these uh, challenging sexual practices. Uh, and this is something that I haven't mentioned yet. I'll go ahead and mention it. Uh, Kundalini 
uh, is partially responsible for the sexual drive within a person. Uh, it is actually the root energetic source of the sexual expression, but it mixes. It, there, there's a shared responsibility of an energetic quality between the, the Kundalini and the Chi energy, or Ki, however people want to pronounce C H I. Uh, kundalini is not chi and chi is not kundalini however kundalini will use chi in certain ways in order to affect certain changes uh, within the human system and that includes the sexual response and you know a person can can drive themselves insane to a certain degree uh, with a, an overstimulation of the of the sexual expression and this can get them into a lot of trouble. This can put them into jail. Um, and then, you know, if you add entities to that, you know, do this or this or that with that person over there, and you're responding to that, well, yeah, that can that can really that can that can that can hurt your freedom severely. And so, once again, um, do not resist a kundalini, and do not put fear into it. Nor will I suggest you put. Uh, accelerated levels of lust into this. Watch your lust control. I mean, if you have to self-stimulate, uh, fine, self-stimulate. That's fine. That, you know, that, that's at least it's not involving another person. Uh, but even then, don't get so wrapped up into the sensate or the, the sensation of, of what the Kundalini awakening can bring. Uh, this does happen. This does happen, and, and you know the Kundalini itself will bring on a rapid onset of, of orgasmic experiences, and, and and I mean rapid. I mean, you know, uh, uh, people walking down the street will have orgasms, uh, you know, maybe ten, twelve seconds apart. It can become a real problem. Actually, it's like drowning in milk, you know, or, or being suffocated by gold. I mean. It's this wonderful, wonderful thing, but you know, you kind of stagger from parking meter to parking meter. So, be advised. With uh, with this, with with the Kundalini, you have this information now. I've described to you uh, in very real terms, uh, experiential terms, uh, what Kundalini syndrome can be, and this is just some of it. You know, our human our human system is this fairly complex deal. I mean, you know, you have 17 trillion typical, you know, typical human, 70 trillion cells. All of these cells are affected by Kundalini at the same time. And yet the Kundalini has its own agenda for certain systems in the body at a certain time. And not everybody is the same. You know, uh, one of the one of the most similar uh, experiences will be the Kundalini uh, works in the endocrine system first and that begins to transform the ductless glandular systems that is a fairly common uh, experience but then you know the you know all the different phenomena that comes one person will have one phenomenon another person will have another one and and uh, you know they may you know they may experience each other's phenomena, but at different times in their life, different times of their kundalini process. And so it isn't the same for everybody, and yet there are some similarities. Okay, So it's hard for me to come out and make absolutist statements about a person's kundalini awakening experience uh, without, without the caveat of saying, hey, you know, we're all unique people. Uh, this is this is different for each person, and yet there are similarities. Uh, the level of Kundalini syndrome is severe, and it is hurtful, and it is painful, and it is scary. It is frightening, uh, but only because you don't have information on it. You have information now. If you listen to these conversations on this blog talk radio channel, the uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems channel, if you listen to all of these conversations, and I suggest that you do, I suggest that you go back and you listen to 
to every single conversation that we've had and allow yourself to be educated about what Kundalini is, then the Kundalini awakening that you're having right now or the Kundalini awakening and activation that you are seeking will go so much better for you. My only agenda, really, is to educate people about this so that you have a better opportunity to make positive choices uh, within your kundalini awakening experience. So let's talk about that. So you're having the kundalini syndrome. You have a, you feel like you have a snake in your spine and, and you're kind of writhing on the ground. You're having kriyas. You're having visions. Entities are saying, kill yourself, kill your wife, kill this, kill that, you know, kick your dog. Uh, all of a sudden, you come into this information. And I'm just going to say, stop everything. Stop being afraid. Stop listening to the entities. Uh, you may not be able to stop seeing things, but stop being afraid of what you see, even if it is fearful. You are becoming a very, very, very powerful individual. Uh, you're not becoming all-knowing, all-seeing just yet. okay? But you're in that process. It's As I mentioned to a, a uh, another person the other day uh, Kundalini is a school for saints you know and you hear that Billy Joel song you know I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints the sinners have much more fun well they don't really and, and what Billy Joel doesn't understand is that the, the saints are crying with joy with love with bliss with ecstasy and uh, no matter no no amount of money can buy that. Kundalini brings that. Okay. And so this school for saints, this, this school for the exalted human being on the world at this time uh, is very real and very strong. And all you really need to do is give yourself some information about it. And I'm not saying, oh, believe everything Chris has to say. No, no, no. You just take, take whatever I give to you and let it let it settle with you as you feel is is comfortable for you. You you may not have some of the experiences that I'm talking about, so you may think, oh, this guy's just full of hooey. You know, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, sitting here in the in the living room and hearing the birds, you know, talk behind me, and you know, nobody's being hurt here. Nobody's knowing, nobody's being harmed. So you can take this information as you wish, and you can help other people with it. I noticed uh, as I look at some of the uh, listeners here, uh, some of you have your own blog talk radio shows, and and you're you're you know you're advising sp people spiritually. And so, yes, 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 use this knowledge, help those people. That's why this is being given. That's why you're not being charged for this. And I will encourage you not to charge people for this knowledge. Give it to them in the same spirit in, as it's been given to you. Now, one of the first remedies for Kundalini Syndrome is the Kundalini Awakening Safeties. And you can find these uh, at the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com website. You go to that website, you can look at the uh, left-hand margin, and it's about the fourth selection down, you'll see a, uh, an offering called the safeties. Click on the safeties, and then copy those safeties. Copy them. Begin to live by those safeties. If you're having Kundalini Syndrome right now, if you begin to understand those, or, and practice those safeties daily, you're going to begin to take yourself right out of that Kundalini syndrome. And and I mean fast. It, you know, inside of a few days, you're out of it. You're out of it. You're And you're on your way into a very, very beautiful, very, very enlightening experience. Enlightening in a, in a, in a positive way, in a, in a way that, that gives you wisdom and, and, and love-based intuition and, you know, many of the things that if you've been having a, a Kundalini Syndrome experience, uh, 
you haven't been having. You know, you haven't been having these these beautiful aspects of the Kundalini, which is most of the time, by the way, most of the time, this is extremely beautiful. Uh, some of the triggers that can really also bring about the Kundalini syndrome is, is the death of a loved one while you're freshly Kundalini activated. Uh, if you're seeking activation either through uh, a certain methodology or listening to somebody's CD or receiving Shakti Pot or doing a certain practice, uh, have, you know, review the, the dynamics of your family. Uh, if somebody's not healthy or, you know, death is imminent, uh, you know, of a loved one, a close one, a mother, a father, brother, sister, husband, spouse, child, let that let that occur first if you have any any way to control that. Let that control let, let let that scenario happen first. Grief inside the Kundalini can be very, very strong. And it it can grief has its own special uh place uh within the the, the Kundalini awakening uh, uh syndrome because it is a level of love. You know you know you're it's a level of love that you're gonna miss this loved one that is passing away and and that can trap you. You become trapped by that love, that grief. And uh, I want you to know that there most certainly is an afterlife. I've been there a few times now. And everybody is safe. Everybody is okay. Uh, you will see those loved, those loved ones again. Uh, they, will, they see you. They see you. It is not anything that you need to... Love them. Just continue to love them, but don't be dominated by your grief. And don't allow your grief to become so strong that it is amplified by the Kundalini, because it will be. You know, that grief, you know, nor normally would last a certain amount of time, will last ten times longer. Okay, so really, really look at your situation before you initiate a Kundalini awakening. Uh, experience, if, if that is what you're continue, uh, considering. If you're already inside the Kundalini, well, if you're inside it already and somebody's died, well, you know what I'm talking about, don't you? But I want you to realize that, and, and you will realize, and your Kundalini will tell you, you know, do not worry about people who have passed. They've just passed into another expression. They're not gone, so to speak. They're just Outside of your five senses, that's all. If you if you begin to accept what the Kundalini is bringing you and changing you into, you'll be you can see into those areas. You'll be able to see them again. But don't activate the Kundalini just because you want to see uh, a loved one who's passed on. Okay, that's you know this is ego. That you know, ego will try to control the Kundalini, and, and the Kundalini does not respond well to ego control. So remember that. Understand that. Uh, take that into your into your uh, informational experience. Follow the safety protocols. Uh, do the the eye lock, the tongue lock, the finger lock, the chin lock. Uh, these these locks are designed to allow to assist the energy in flowing. Begin to do your forgivenesses. If anyone has hurt you in your life, well, you forgive them. And you forgive yourself for whatever you may have done to encourage them to hurt you or in response to them hurting you. Do your forgiveness. This is a big, big, big uh, key to the dungeon door of Kundalini Syndrome. Do your forgivenesses. Do not hurt anybody. Do not hurt yourself. Stop partaking of substances that are hurtful to you, such as alcohol. Do not do alcohol at all. Do not do caffeine at all. I know, I know, I know. All of you coffee drinkers, black tea drinkers, you're going, what do you mean don't do caffeine? How do you expect me to get up in the morning? 
Well, yeah. You, believe it or not, you know, as you were a child, you were able to get up quite easily without that cup of uh, caffeine. And I'm going to suggest that within a Kundalini context, caffeine is the key to a Kundalini syndrome. It gives you the opportunity to go into the syndrome faster than you would uh, without having caffeine present in your system. Caffeine is an adrenal uh, stimulant, and so you, your, your adrenals become hyperactive and hyper-expressive in the amount of adrenaline that is put into the bloodstream. And this is the body's own version of, of, of speed or methamphetamine. And, you know, as, you're, as you have this fight-or-flee hormone without anyone to fight or flee, well, you're going to create things to fight or flee to justify the amount of, of adrenaline in the system. And this is what brings on fear and paranoia. So don't do the caffeine. Do your best to stay away from caffeine. Uh, along the same line of the kidneys and the adrenals, uh, eat as much watermelon as you can, best in the morning. Eat as much watermelon as you can. Watermelon is a is a a real blessed fruit that has a a combination of specific nutrients that really, really, really uh, assist a kundalini awakening person in keeping the levels of of hydration uh, um, good, keeping the levels of uh, electrolytes you know very healthy. Uh, everything from the zinc and the selenium and all of the it's a combination that watermelon has, that it's very, very beneficial to kundalini people. So, eat the watermelon. Even if you don't like the taste of it, eat the watermelon. Another option is is coconut milk, coconut water, coconut milk. Uh, if uh, watermelon is in season, uh, then, you know, if you, if you have the opportunity to, to, to get a coconut, then the coconuts also serve uh, serve a very positive pers- uh, purpose for the Kundalini awakening person, especially those that are in the syndrome, the Kundalini syndrome. Uh, once again, so and, and, and I'll say again, don't pay attention to anything that is coming to you um, spiritually by way of entities. No matter what they promise, they do not have your best interests at heart. No matter what they say, do not listen to them. Steer clear of that. Uh, the more you ignore them, the less they become a, an active feature in your Kundalini waking experience. Um, so, yeah, so take out the caffeine. Take out processed sugars, white processed sugars, high fructose corn syrups. Do not do that. Do not do those. You can have a positive experience with stevia or or any of the other uh, natural, less processed, uh, organic uh, uh, sweeteners. Do not do MSG. Do not do, uh, uh, what are these things called? Uh, uh, Aspartame. I think that's how you pronounce it. I forget what the logo name of that is, but do not do aspartame. Uh, Do not do these things that, that, you know, are just, like little workarounds, you know, not eating sugar or stuff like that. Uh, if you're going to have sugar, at least have good, clean, you know, minimally processed sugar. Uh, uh, don't get tripped up over this uh, agave thing. Do not eat the uh, the agave uh, sweetened product. This whole agave sweetener myth is just a trap. It's it's one of the most processed uh, uh, sugars out there. So watch your levels of, you know, don't don't pick up the agave item off of the grocery shelf. Watch your spices, your really, really hot spices. Uh, inside of a kundalini awakening or a kundalini syndrome, uh, this, this is not happy land for you. Uh, try to keep your food as bland as you can be for a time. This isn't forever. This is for, you know, maybe the first year or two. And if you start paying attention to your kundalini, it will kind of give you 
uh, a compulsion to eat a certain food or not. And that that is a very good indicator right there. But but when you're inside of the safeties, when you're following the safeties, your kundalini will recognize itself within the safety. The, the kundalini wrote the safeties. So your kundalini will look at the safety protocols and go, yes, exactly. And it will begin to adopt specific ways of communication with you that will allow you to stay away from fear, stay away from, uh, you know, self-abuse or, or you know, uh, stay away from pornography and all of these things. Okay. Uh, so look at those safety protocols and, and uh, adopt them as a daily expression into your life. And that includes, that includes the five Tibetans. And and it also the, the safeties are not just the five Tibetans. You know, you get a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, I I've been doing the safeties all my life." You know, I just I just have to smile and go, "Oh, really? You know, you were doing the five Tibetans when you were three. Well, how cool is that? You know, so so don't think that you can just read the safeties and go, "Oh, well, I've been doing these." Go and do the safeties. Word for word, do the safeties. Another thing uh, that will help you with the Kundalini Awakening Syndrome is grounding yourself. I have a video on uh, YouTube. It's all about grounding yourself. I have an article on uh, on all the various groups. It's called Grounding. Grounding is extremely important. And I, I will suggest, strongly suggest, that you, you do your grounding. Sit next to a tree and let the tree become an extension of your soul, of your body, of your expression. Let the tree ground you to this world. Often, you know, we're off in the stratosphere with the, with the Kundalini where, you know, we're experiencing these extremely high highs and and uh, you know, being pulled this way and that by by uh, angelic and energetic forces. Ground yourself. Walk barefoot on the bare soil and feel that connection you have with the earth. Just feeling the dirt on the bottoms of your feet is a tremendous grounding experience. Sit on the ground. Now. I, you know, I, I am one of the, I, I'm one of these terrible people that will suggest that you, you sit bare skin to bare soil. So, however you can do that without getting in trouble, do that. I suggest privacy, uh, backyard privacy, uh, uh, you name it. I suggest, you know, being as private about this as you can. And that's another thing. Um, once you once you figure that you have Kundalini, um, and say you're you're you know, you know you're kind of swerving into the Kundalini syndrome area, it is best not to discuss this with people that don't have Kundalini. It will it will just frighten them. It will just scare them, and their fear response out of love for you. Their fear response will be deleterious for you. You don't need their fear. You don't need their invalidation of what is occurring. You know, because it's not happening to them, you know, they 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 will invalidate your experience. And there's no need for that. There's no need for that. Uh, unfortunately, in the West, and, and actually in many places in India and China, uh, the, the Kundalini isn't understood very well, and very, 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 very few practitioners in the world today do what we're doing right here, giving people information on how to surrender to the Kundalini, how to accept the Kundalini, how to pay attention to the Kundalini, not how to control it. I'm not so hot on saying, okay, well, step one in controlling the kundalini is this. No, 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 no. The kundalini is allowed to control you. And as soon as you're able to begin a conversation with this energy within you, the 
better your experience is going to be. And the more you're able to surrender and accept what it brings to you, the better and more positive your experience is going to be with the Kundalini. Your ego does not control the Kundalini. Okay, it doesn't control the divine. Your ego is basically here to help you within the five sense context survive on this world in the different societies. Your will, which is different from your ego, your will does not control the Kundalini, but what it does is it controls your personal response to the Kundalini. And so I will suggest that you begin to let your will be controlled by your Kundalini. And this will this makes things so much better for you. So much better. And you know, you won't necessarily have to have the Kriyas at work or the orgasms during that business meeting. <laughs> That's the not the easiest thing to do. It's like you know, your boss asks you, Why are you squinting your eyes like that? <laughs> so let your will be dominated by the Kundalini and begin that conversation. The conversation would go like uh We'll, we'll say, okay, I'm having uh, Kriyas at work, and, and I'm in a I'm a neurosurgeon, and I can't be having automatic yoga positions while I'm cutting into people's bodies. So, say, uh, Kundalini in me, please do not give me Kriyas while I am at work. All, any of the time that I am, ex- you know, except when I'm driving a car, I will. My nights are yours. The days that I'm not working are yours, and I will accept your Kriyas gratefully. But during work and during my driving time, please do not give me Kriyas. And the Kundalini will hear this, and your Kriyas will stop. If you've been having Kriyas during work or during when you're driving, which isn't typical, it doesn't typically, it knows that you're driving. But with your work, even though it knows that you're at work, it wants you to develop this conversation, this communication. And so it responds, and it will respond fairly immediate. And uh, this is typically how things go. Now, if there's, a, if there's some other karmic type of scenario that is suggesting, you know, well, your Kriyas have to happen at work because you're a security guard. You're not, you know, you're not moving around a lot. You're sitting there in this cubicle, you know, so you can have Kriyas. <laughs> so, so it, it, you know, talk with your kundalini. Have this conversation. It is a conscious, energetic force of a divine quality that is expressing through you. Once again, divinity is real. Divinity is real. You know, if I could say that a thousand times in this radio show, I would. Divinity is real, and it has a real connection with you at the base of your spine and inside your spine. The Kundalini will come up, uh, a channel that the uh, ancient Sanskriti people called the Chitrini channel, a little less than a hair in, in width. And uh, that is one of its main, uh, and you feel, it feels like a huge channel. When, it, when the kundalini comes up, it, though, it feels like you've got an irrigation pipe stuck up your spine. So size size is, is, is deceptive uh, within the kundalini context. Uh, excuse me one moment here. I'll take a drink. <clears throat> so, okay. So, you know, I've been speaking about this now. Uh, there's a few people on here. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if there's anybody that would like to call in, um, uh, you can call in. The number is uh, three four seven would be the area code uh, in the in the continental U.S. But uh, once again, if you're calling from Europe or from Africa or South America or China or somewhere, uh, you you'll need to put the uh, United States country code in front of that. And I believe the country code for the United States is 01. So the number is 347-934-0026. And I have have this little switchboard 
screen that they give me on the computer here. So I can see when you're calling in, and and, uh, and I will pick up the phone uh, and do that. I would like to uh, take this time to announce that uh, Shanti Davy has an excellent, excellent show on Tantra. And I will be speaking with her um, at 2 o'clock, and we'll be talking about Tantra. And I would like to uh, to um, invite all of you to learn some more about Tantra here. And and with that regard, Shandi, I see that you're you're in the chat room. Can you call? Uh, can you call up and uh, and come on the air and give people the details about your show? I'm afraid to to get out of my little studio screen here. I'll you know I'll accidentally disconnect or something like that. So, Shandi Davy, if you could uh, give a call, uh, the number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and I'm uh, I'm awaiting you uh, to call in. I, I see we have about, let's see, one, two, three. I'd like to welcome everybody. I see there are some online users. Uh, guest 7024, 7071, 7159, 7437, 8068, uh, Masiba and Santi. I'd like to thank you all for, for uh, uh, listening in today. I think this might be Shandi right here. Hello? Hello? Oh, Lordy. Put you on hold here. Um, yeah. Not quite sure how that works. I got two callers now. Um, let me, let me, let me try again here. Come on. Okay. Hello? Is this Shandi? We'll have to speak here. <laughs> I hope this is working. Anyway, uh 323-202-0516. Um, I'm answering your call, but I'll go ahead and put you on hold because I can't hear you for some reason. But hopefully you can hear me. Um, so, yeah. So I will be speaking uh, with uh, on Shandi Davies' show, and I think you can just go into her. You, you spell her name, C H A N D I, and then the next word is Davy, and it's D E V I. And uh, she she has an excellent blog talk show. Matter of fact, if you go to the blog talk search window and you just put Shandi Davy or the Karma Cafe is the name of her show, Karma Cafe. And uh, she has uh, uh, her program here on Blog Talk Radio as well. And I'll be speaking with her later on, uh, actually a half hour after we finish the show. So, so um, back to the Kundalini Syndrome. Let the Kundalini be in charge of... Oh, hey, what's going on here? Hello? So weird. You can tell I'm just like this this really experienced radio show host, right? Uh, anyway, so let the Kundalini begin to... Hello? Hi! There <laughs> you go. You were pushing the wrong button. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um Hi, Shondi. Everybody, this Hi. is Shondi Davy. Um, Hello. And, and, and can you can you give our listeners uh, uh, information about your show? Oh, okay. It's two o'clock Pacific Standard Time, and um, it's on the Block Talk Radio slash Karma Cafe. And the show. How do you spell called, Karma Cafe? How do you oh, spell that? K K A R M A. And cafe is C A S S E. So there's two F's. And the show is Kundalini and Tantra. 
Yeah, and and, and you have. Uh, uh-huh. Are there um, archives? To, I mean, of the other of the other shows you and I have done together. Yes, yes. There's there's some really great um, archive shows uh, with Chrism, and you can even listen to to them on um, on iTunes, which is really cool. And you know, it stays in the archives forever and ever. So, you know, people still come back and, and listen to these shows, and they're very, very informative. So welcome, and please take advantage of it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Shanti. Thank you for, for, for coming on. <laughs> I was trying to. It's funny. I was trying to. I, I got the um, screen on, and then I heard you call, talking, saying to call in. And I thought, oh, my gosh. <laughs> he knows I was here. <laughs> Now, Shanti, uh, uh, I gave you Shaktipat a, a long time ago, right? Yes, yes. And and uh, how is it that you didn't have Kundalini syndrome? Okay, what happened is, in fact, you know, I wanted to talk about this. Um, we might as well, we could do it now even. Um, I was thinking about it all morning. I thought, you know what, there's actually three steps of Kundalini because the first one was... Um, it's what most people have an experience. They have an experience, and that can result in nothing usually because you're not aware that you've had it. Um, but then an awakening takes place when you get shakti part, and I think that's what it is. And I also, you know, because after the experience that I had, it took years before I finally started um, on a path, and the path was very, very uh, severe, if you might, <laughs> you know, yeah, where yeah. I did all the practices. I mean, I burned and burned and burned. I cried. Sometimes I wanted to take it back, like, okay, I changed my mind. <laughs> but, of course, that's impossible. <laughs> Once you're there, you're there. There's no turning right, back. Right. And, and I went through all that over a period of years, you know, 10, 20 years. I mean, just... And, and each time you go through that, you know, it kind of smooths out all the, the bumps that you have. And so um, by the time I met you, and, and when you did Shakti, but I, I could feel it immediately. But I didn't have all that um, because I'd already been through all that. You, you had done, you have done, you've done preparation for it without yes. knowing that you were doing preparation. Um, yeah. You had been in inside of a refinement uh, mm-hmm. experience and, and and kind of a self-inflicted protocol of mm-hmm. of getting ready to receive the Kundalini and and uh, so and you'd also written uh, you, you had already written the book Om to Orgasm hadn't you Yes, I I, I believe I had yes, and in can fact you give I the, can you give the li- can you give listeners information on that book. Yeah, it's called From Om to Orgasm. And what it is, is um, it, it starts with Om, because I believe that's the whole preparatory um, thing that you have to undertake before you ever achieve the orgasm part. And for me, orgasm meant living in bliss. It's not just a one-time sexual thing. Once you reach that state, the bliss stays with you forever, then that's the true orgasm the life orgasm. So that's what it was. It was entitled Om to Orgasm. And, you know, some people would jokingly say, well, how come it's not Orgasm to Om? I said, well, that's the default. <laughs> that's the default okay. method, you know. So this was kind of the opposite, but you have to have the preparation. And even Well, if the you preparation will occur no matter what. It, it'll occur yeah. whether you know it or not, right? Mm-hmm. It'll yeah. occur with you know, the, it's going to occur, and that can be some of the difficult life experiences uh, that a person right. has in the beginning. And you have to well, hey, kind of know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I've got another oh, caller on the line. I'm going to yes. go ahead and, oh, and put through. Okay. But uh, everybody, I'd like you to join Shandi and I on the Karma Cafe Spiritual Hour. Is it an hour, Shandi? It, it's uh, 45 minutes. At 45 minutes. Class. Yes, and I look forward to talking to you and all the listeners. Um, please join us and call in, <laughs> and we'll, look, we'll see you soon. <laughs> and this okay, will be about tantra. 
Is it about time to act in the leader? Yes. Thank you, my dear. Really Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, Amelia Centara is here, so can you go ahead and uh, this must be the other caller here. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Chrism. It is Amelia here. That other caller just dropped off. <laughs> oh, gosh, I scared no him worries. away. Hey, <laughs> thanks for listening. I thought you, I thought you were recovering. Uh, I forgot to mention, everyone, that a uh, that uh, uh, Centara she broke her wrist and and um, so so I, w- I was giving her some time off but evidently she you know you're doing fine. I'm doing fine. I just popped on there to listen, so it's lovely to hear you. So oh. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Well, we're good, and uh, and uh, we'll you know we'll continue with those with those healings on that wrist. And everybody who would mm-hmm. like to send. Uh, Centara Healing, uh, it's her right wrist, and uh, send some positive energies to her. Her Kundalini is doing a really good job right now, though. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, and thank you for for helping me out with the switchboard here. (laughs) No worries, no worries. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Bye. Um, let's see, um, we still have a 323-202 caller, and I believe they just wanted to listen. So I'm going to put them on hold so that they can listen. I believe that's how it works here. So here we go. So, yes, uh, uh, the Kundalini Syndrome is also a form of uh, preparation of uh, similar to what Shanti uh, Davy was was uh, talking about, uh, you can have these harsh, harsh, harsh experiences as a child, and and inside of the Kundalini, your preparation will continue. It's not all of a sudden, oh, I've got Kundalini now, and I don't need to prepare anymore. I don't need to do any more refinement things, refinement practices. So if you stop doing that, the Kundalini is just going to give them to you anyway. Um, so you may find that uh, that you're still challenged, even though you have the Kundalini, and, and you may ask yourself, "Oh, geez, why would I ever want to have Kundalini?" You know, if it's causing me all these problems, I'm in fear, and I lost my job, I lost my spouse, I lost my home, I'm living on the street. You know, why on earth would I ever want to have that? And you know. That is a good question. When you when you're there on the street, and I've been there, and uh, you know, you ask yourself, you know, well, if this is if this is life, I don't want any part of it. But you just have to keep going because things are going to get better. Things will get better, and even for those of you who are locked inside the Kundalini syndrome right now, if you follow the instructions that I have given to you on this program, or that some of the listeners, you know, some of the guests who are listening, and if they have their own TV, uh, radio show like Shanti, Shanti has her own show, uh, follow these protocols. Follow these instructions. Stop resisting the Kundalini. Stop it. Surrender to the Kundalini. Let it do its job with you which is changing you from the inside out. This is part of the reason why the uh, the, the path of the saint is so difficult. It's because the path of the saint, you know, they have to go through this. They've had to go through this. Any saint that's a real saint, not a political saint, but a real saint, uh, they've had to have the kundalini and they've had to go through the purging of their ego and the purging of their intellect and the purging of their habits and their assumptions and their their uh, you know their control issues they had to go through all these purges of their assumptions of what is real and what isn't real and this is the same thing that is happening for you who are inside of the kundalini syndrome right now now there's more to be said about the syndrome and I can't fit it all in the show uh, but if, if anybody writes in and, 
and if they want to get a hold of of me, my my email is uh, K uh, as in um, starts with a K. Kundalini starts with a K, but uh, King K K Fire F I R E for all F O R A L L. So K F I R E F O R A L L at yahoo.com. You can give me a call. Let me know how things are with you now. Try not to be so lost into your syndrome that you, that that you have created your reality. You know, be open to changing that reality. You know, if you've adopted uh, language and practices that, you know, I'm this, uh, you know, things along the line of of indigo, well, this indigo person is doing this to me and I'm doing that to them, you know, all of this stuff, I I would really strongly suggest that you begin to put aside uh, some of the assumptions that that we make of a spiritual nature that is descriptive of a certain process within the body. Uh, put aside all your assumptions and, and come into this as cleanly and purely without your assumptions, without your expectations. You know, do that as best that you can. Allow the Kundalini itself to begin to teach you and and so you come into this as a child. Come as a child and allow the divine within to teach you and to change you and to transform you. And I want you to have confidence in what is happening to you. Trust that you are being enlightened. And I mean this in a dual way. Enlightenment is really in Light in at M E A N T. This is the light that was meant to be within you. Embrace that. Embrace your enlightenment. It's not giving you power over other people, it's not giving you control over the natural resources of this planet. Sometimes it is, but typically, you know, it. It's not about having leverage over life. It's about giving your life into a divine uh, matrix, into a divine expression. And then the divine itself, as it comes through you, may have leverage over, over any aspect of life, whether it's physical, environmental, whatever it is. Divinity will have its way. And uh, I think that is about it for now uh, with uh, with this subject. Uh, uh, once again, go to the various groups. If you just joined, uh, go to the group on the Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Yahoo or uh, the Kundalini Awakening Systems one at Facebook or at uh, at Google Plus, the same name, Kundalini Awakening, apostrophe, actually. Kundalini Awakening, apostrophe, also on Facebook. I have a Kundalini Healing uh, group uh, at Yahoo Groups, and uh, I encourage you to join that. And there's also a Kundalini Healing group on Facebook, and I encourage you to join that. And I encourage you to join that if you have a problem, like, like uh, Centara as a... You know, she hurt her wrist, and so first thing I tell her to do is get yourself on the healing group. Okay, and so I encourage, I encourage you, the listeners, to do this as well. I want to say a hello to all of the people listening in the archives. Uh, I think the archives are a, a great way to listen to these programs. You can listen to them uh, as you, you know, whenever you feel like it, because not everybody is in the Pacific time zone, and so. I welcome you and I, and I give a hello to you who listen on the, on the archives and uh, appreciate you uh, partaking of this information and feel free to help yourself with this information and to help others too. This is about kindness. This is about self 
selfless service. Selfless service. This is about giving knowledge about the Kundalini into our Western populations so that people don't need to be uh, put into a, a psychiatric treatment facility, a.k.a. an insane asylum. Uh, you know, people don't need to be homeless because, you know, they're they're having this amazing and, and should be beautiful uh, experience happening to them. You know, in many cases should be, not all cases. Uh, for instance, in my case, I had to go through all of the hurt and all of the pain so that I would be able to help people from an authentic perspective. Uh, the authenticity of my awakening, you know, was it, it needed to, to take severe levels so that so that I could you know, the, the validation that I have for my experiences is very strong and, and and I can help others through that experience. And I encourage anybody else that has had uh, strong, uh, even challenging experiences through the Kundalini to, to help other people have the Kundalini. The Kundalini is going to come no matter what. When a person is ready, it comes. When a person is ready to have that interest, it will come. It's not like fruit on a tree, though. You, you hear this a lot. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. You know, it's like, yeah, well, you know, the teacher can be, a, you know, a bee sting. I mean, you know, the teacher does not necessarily indicate a corporeal manifestation. The teacher can be uh, the things that uh, Shandi had to go through in preparation. The teacher can be that intuitive preparation that a that a person has uh preparing themselves to have the kundalini and then of course when the kundalini ta- comes when it does come well then the teacher has most definitely appeared but it's in, it's appeared the teacher's appeared inside your spine how many you know of your grade school teachers did that so you may want to adjust your expectations of what a teacher is and how it comes and what it is to be ready when the student is ready. I will suggest that when the student is getting ready, the teacher has already come. That would be my uh, my little spin on that. Thank you all for listening to this program. And uh, we'll be having uh, another program next week. We're going to consider changing the time from from 12 p.m. PST to another time that might be more conducive uh, to people who, you know, have to work on Wednesdays. Um, So if you have any feedback about what the best time would be for you, let us know, and uh, we'll definitely put that into the uh, consideration. Anyway, uh, thank you, everyone, for listening, and may you be blessed in your Kundalini Awakening experience.